Okay, so let's talk about this real quick, okay? Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force, okay? And we're going to rewind this just a little bit. Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force. That means OSREF, my friends, okay? That's what we use in the law enforcement world to refer to as OSREF. So it was made to combat major, right, large, and typically transnational drug trafficking organizations that transcend borders, okay? So OSREF cases, guys, are what is designated on the most significant of DTOs or drug trafficking organizations. I've done several OSREF cases myself. <coughs> Excuse me, as I sneeze over here. Um, when I was in Miami, I did a couple of OSREF cases. And when I was in Texas, I did a big OSREF case that centered around crystal methamphetamine. And um, it's very difficult to get your case approved as an OSREF or Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force. And basically, and see, no one else on YouTube, by the way, can talk about this shit because no one's actually done an OSREF case as the lead case agent. I was the lead case agent. I created the, the OSREF uh, paperwork, everything, filed it. And the way it goes is this. You need to have one or more agency involved, typically one, at least one fe other federal agency involved, right? Because it's considered a task force, which means can be done by one agency. Then you need to have a sophisticated organization. And then more importantly, you need to establish that your, like, your organization is linked to some large scale drug trafficking organization, right? You call them a CPOT or a RPOT, regional priority uh, organized target or CPOT, which is typically international, right? Um, and you need to be able to link your drug traffic organization to one of these two pots of, uh, of how do I say this, of, of as a source of supply, okay? And then you got to write up a whole narrative on why your case deserves to be designated as OSADEF case. And then you also need to um, have a bunch of targets identified. And you need to pretty much identify who's the suppliers in your organization, who's the couriers, who's the, um, you know, distributors, who's the financers, et cetera. And, um, it's not easy to do. You know, my OSDF write-ups were 10 plus pages easily, right? And that doesn't include all the paperwork that comes in where you have to fill in all the information. Um, and it, it's got to be pretty damn good because what happens is you have to go and then do a presentation in front of uh, the OSDF committee, right? And when you go to the OSDF committee, there's someone from FBI there, DEA there, IRS there, um, HSI there, all the federal agencies are there, okay? U.S. Marshals, ATF, everyone, okay? And... You present your case there and they pretty much, you know, okay, we saw your presentation, whatever. And then if it gets approved, they approve it. And then you get something called uh, an OSREF number assigned to you. Okay. And there's uh, different OSREF regions in the United States. Uh, last I checked, I think there were seven. They're pretty much in every major city. There is obviously one in Miami, one in Houston, one in um, uh, New York City, LA, Chicago, um, Phoenix. So they're all over the place. Pretty much all the main. Drug hub cities have an OSADF strike force there, and um, pretty much it was, it was created, man, to, to dismantle and disrupt large-scale drug trafficking organizations. I'm telling you guys this all from the top of my head, by the way, because I used to do these cases myself. I mean, obviously, I could pull up the DOJ website for y'all, but that is how you get an OSADF case proposed, approved, and then you get an OSADF case number, and then bam, once you have an OSADF case assigned to you, that's a big deal because now you can get federal funding to pay um, you know, overtime to local and state police officers that work on your case or detectives. You get funding for equipment, laptops, um, surveillance equipment, cameras, whatever it may be that you need for your investigation, undercover fronts, all that stuff. And then most importantly, you get a dedicated OSADF AUSA, which as you guys know, your prosecutor is very important, especially when it comes to federal cases. So that AUSA is dedicated to OSADF so they don't have as many cases so they can really focus on your cases. Any big drug investigation that you guys see that is prosecuted, nine out of 10 times is going to be an OSADF case, okay? Um, so if someone has an OSADF case, you know for a fact that they did some work to do that case. Any of these big RICO cases that are involved with drugs, any of these big uh, organized crime cases typically are OSADF cases. Even if it's not centered around drugs, OSADF has kind of changed their... Um, kind of changed the layout a bit, and now they're more focused on organized crime as a whole. So I actually had an OSADF case that was primarily human smuggling. You know, a couple years ago, you weren't able to do that. So it's good that the OSADF initiative has switched a bit from, you know, only going after primarily drugs to other facets of organized crime, especially since other types of crimes are starting to rise up. Like fraud, for example, huge. You know, you're getting more fraudsters and scammers now than drug traffickers. Why? Well, because with fraud and scamming, it doesn't carry as big of a penalty. So why would someone go ahead and sell a bunch of cocaine and crack and all this other heroin, whatever, and do a bunch of time 
when they can go ahead and start scamming people for credit cards and make way more money or make the same amount of money with far less risk, right? When you investigate and when you do drug trafficking, every agency and their mom investigates drugs. You got the FBI after you, you got the DEA after you, you got ATF after you, you got Homeland Security Investigations after you. Everyone does Title 21 cases nowadays, which is drug trafficking, okay? However, not everyone does fraud and financial crimes. The main agencies that do fraud and financial crimes are uh, Homeland Security Investigations, the Secret Service, and the FBI. Those are three, and, and the IRS as well, but they don't typically do fraud as much. They're more concerned with like violations of the tax code, all right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so anyway, guys, that's a quick little summary on OCDF and it's how it's transformed over the decades. Hope you guys enjoyed that because... <laughs> I know OSADEF like the back of my hand. I just went off the top of my fucking head on that one, man. So uh, that's how OSADEF works in the United States. Uh, Dolphins, you got anything on that? That was beautifully said. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, I learned a lot, though. Yeah. During that little segment. So, uh, so yeah. So th this in this case, man, they, they basically designated this an OSADEF case, and they're starting to go after the suppliers of the cocaine, which then in turn becomes crack, which leads to all the violence.